One Zambia, one nation with the news at 18 hours. My name is Lista Mtokwa. We take a look at the headlines. President Edgar Lungo has vowed to continue defending the integrity of the country's judicial system from any form of intimidation. About 72 teachers on the government payroll in the Ngawe district have reportedly abandoned their schools. ZNBC will broadcast live the World Boxing Council WBC Bantamweight title fight between Catherine Piri and Ligabisile Shabalala of South Africa. Now the news in detail. President Edgar Lungo has vowed to continue defending the integrity of the country's judicial system from any form of intimidation. President Lungu says Zambia has one of the best judicial systems, hence he will defend office bearers from any form of intimidation. The head of state was speaking after swearing in of eight office bearers in the Court of Appeals at State House today. President Lungu says some politicians have been accusing him of interfering with the outcome of cases when he does not even call the judges unless duty demands so. He says being a politician himself, he was set as an example to protect and defend the integrity of the judiciary, which is, in, which is independent of the executive. President Lungu has advised politicians first with cases before the courts to refrain bringing names of others in their proceedings. Justice Fujian Sichsanga is president, while Justice Charlie Mchenga will be deputy. Others sworn into the Court of Appeals include Justice Catherine Makungu, Justice Justin Chashi, Justice Flavia Shimba, Justice Ajudi Mulongoti, Justice Dominic Sichinga, and Justice Mwanga Kondolo. Zambia goes to the polls on August 11, 2016, and councillors standing on various political party tickets have gone out to campaign and seek to be elected. Today, we lift the lead on candidates vying for Chawama Watu in Chawama constituency, as we see in the following details. Councillors are key in the country's democratic process as they are close to the people on the ground. For this reason, the people of Chawama Watu in Chawama constituency have high expectation of those that are offering themselves to be area councillors. They want the candidates who will be elected on the 11th of August to address the problem of water, poor drainage system, among others. <laughs> I caught up with candidates from the Rainbow Party, UPND and the Patriotic Front to get their plans for the people of Chawamawat too. Roger Sinkara from Rainbow Party says he will prioritize youth and women empowerment programs when elected as councillor. We have not, as leaders, we have not invested in the youths, in the women. We have not done that. How am I going to do that? There are no activities that keep the youths busy in Chawama. 
how are we going to say we stop violence if we are not involving the youths in productive activities? Example, sports. I, I, me as a councillor, when I come in, I want to have a a committee that is very transparent for the word, which will be the word development committee, not picking just anyhow. Mr. Leonard Iskombo of PF has promised to work on the drainage system, among others. Uh, the promises are very simple because most of the jobs in Shawama uh, are done. Apart from water, we need water and we need to continue the, our drainage system. As we said from the beginning, we, we've got about uh, two dams that we need to utilize. But the main one that we need to utilize is the one that is in our ward, which is near the police station. But besides that, also the water distribution has been the main challenge so far. Andrew Zuru of UPND wants Chawama to have its own secondary school, as well as continue with the programs that the former councillor Port Fatembo started in the area. Uh, mainly, I will look at the issue of uh, water, sanitary, uh, sanitation in Chawama. Uh, it is really bad. Uh, immediately I take over as the councillor in Chawama. I'm assuring you, I will not disappoint you. In Chawama, we have got three basic schools, but we don't have a secondary school. Uh, I've thought of important for us that if we pick one basic school and turn to a secondary school. Efforts to get the unique candidate failed as his phone went unanswered. For now, these aspiring candidates are busy soliciting for votes in the August 11 general election. Hector Simfuko, TV2 News in Lusaka. Livingston District Voter Education Committee Chairperson Charles Musonda has assured that all the eligible voters in Livingston will be sensitized on the referendum and general election before August 11. Pastor Musonda has told ZNBC News in Livingston today that voter educators have been placed in all the 17 wards to educate the electorate on the running met close 50 plus 1 threshold and the referendum details in the following report. The clock is ticking with barely two months before the country goes to the pause. The election fever is high. While political parties are on the ground convincing the electorates that each candidate is the best, the electorates remain unsure on how to go about this particular election which will run concurrently with the referendum. This is the reason why the voter education facilitators have moved on the ground in Livingston under the supervision of the District Voter Education Committee to sustain the public on the referendum and the general election. Special to this election is the referendum. As we know, there is a question that uh, has been posed uh, to which people will be saying yes or no on the Bill of Rights. So we are carrying out all this sensitization to make sure our community are well informed and uh, come 11 August so that they'll be able to make a very, very informed decision in the district or in the constituents of Livingston. Committee Chairperson Pastor Charles Musonda has assured that all the eligible voters in Livingston will be well informed in good time for the August 11 general election. In the referendum, every citizen who is 18 years and above and they are a holder of a Green National Registration card, they are going to vote. So that is our target group. I'm pretty sure we will get there. We are getting there and will be there. And every citizen in Livingston will be well informed. Those that have been educated have this to say. I was a bit confused because I could not even understand to say, am I entitled to vote for a, pres a president from, the, uh, the, from a separate party and come to vote for alignment over the, over the, other, pa the other party? So I've seen that. It seems as if it is a forcing matter, want or not. Once I vote for one party, I have got no right to go and vote for another alignment of the other, another party. That was my worry. So I'm clear that I'm being taught now because, because I must follow what the procedure is supposed to be. As evidence at this market in Livingston, the electorates are willing to learn. What remains is for the harvesters to take advantage of the remaining two months to ensure as many as possible voters are well informed to make the best choices. Mombeha Mobola, ZNBC News in Livingston. 
About 72 teachers on the government payroll in the Ngawe district have reportedly abandoned their schools. Chief Ngawe of Ngawe district in Central Province disclosed this when he met Vice President Nongawina in Kapirin Poshi. Chief Ngawe says this is despite the teachers drawing salaries and rural hardship allowances. The traditional leader said the situation has affected the education standards in the district. And Mrs. Wina said the PF government is working hard to address challenges facing people in Ngawe district. She noted that Ngawe is faced with a lot of challenges than any other newly created district in the country. Well, about 72 teachers are reflected on the payroll that they belong to Ngawe district. But these teachers, uh, Honorable Vice President, are not in Ngawe district. They are being paid salaries. We are appealing if you can send people to districts who are interested to work in the rural areas. There are facilities there. We will look after them as chiefs. We will even assist them with a portion of land where they can help us to farm. But the people that are on the payroll who are not there are not really having value. And it is affecting the education standards of our children. By 2021, all the rural areas in Zambia are opened up we would have rural road networks uh, all over the country. And uh, as I've uh, already explained, this program has started. We have engaged the Zambia National Service to work on our roads in uh, the remotest parts of the country. So this is ongoing. The issue of uh, <coughs> chiefdom boundaries this has been with us for some time, but now I think it, uh, it has been accelerated. I don't know for what reason. I think maybe it's now the realization of the commercial value of land in Zambia. And uh, uh, government is addressing it by looking at producing a new chiefdom uh, boundary maps. Meanwhile, Minister of General Education spokesperson Hilary Chipango said the ministry is working on putting infrastructure such as teachers' houses and schools in new districts. Mr. Chipango notes that government and the four teachers' unions have negotiated for allowances for those in rural areas to be motivated. He has, however, assured the chief and others in the new district that his ministry is not sitting idle, but working on addressing this with a planned recruitment of 6,000 new teachers. We take our first set of commercials. After that, I'll be no fear for their lives plus more stories. Stay with us. We continue with the news. The Albino Foundation has called on government to protect people living with albinism against any possible ritual killings. Executive Director John Chiti has also called on Traditional Healers Association of Zambia Tapaz to regulate the operations of traditional healers and witch doctors in the country. Mr. Chiti says people living with albinism are now living in fear following a number of ritual murders targeted at albinos. Mr. Chiti was speaking on the sidelines of the International Albinism Awareness Day held at the National Museum today. I've been flocking to other countries where they see or where they find you know, opportunities to work. So look at Zambia. This is like an open field for them. We have so many witch doctors who even advertise their products everywhere. Here it is free and they operate very well. So number one, we're asking for protection. The number two, we're also asking for regulations. We want to urge the witch doctor. Uh, there is an organization for traditional healers. Yes, tapas. We want to ask them, to urge them, that they should regulate their members. Because we, these are the people who are causing the beliefs, who are causing people to believe that they can use certain parts of our bodies to become rich. The Minister of Health has started installing medical equipment at Chingwere Referral Clinic in Lusaka. This is part of the upgrading of the clinic into a first-level hospital. Provincial Medical Officer Dr. Kenneth Malama says, despite the installation of the new X-ray machine, patients will not be able to access the service for at least seven days. And a check by TV2 News at the old clinic building found workers busy installing the new X-ray machine. It will take about uh, five to seven days to install it completely. 
So in between, there's going to be uh, some minimal disruption to the service. But we've put measures in place to ensure that those who really, really need um, an X-ray to be done, they'll be taken to Levi Mwanawasa General Hospital, indeed UTH. Uh, but we are excited that come next week, our people once again are going to have access to a better a medical imaging a service through this uh, X-ray facility. Let me also mention that uh, the whole package for Chilenje uh, upgrade and material is costing us about 80 million kwacha. And this is being done in conjunction with our colleagues from Japan um, and the Republic of Zambia. So we are almost there. And as you were updated by the Honorable Deputy Minister, uh, this project will be handed over to the government of the Republic of Zambia mid-July, about 15th July. And after that, we are excited that um, both Chilenja and Matero should be open to the members of the public. The upgrading of both Chilenja and Chinguere Clinic in Lusaka have been done at a total cost of 80 million kwacha. Government is next month expected to officially open the two first-level hospitals. The Zambia Bureau of Standards has drafted standards on fruits and vegetables meant to protect the health and safety of consumers. Zab's head of marketing and public relations manager, Hazel Zulu, says the draft standards provide for product specifications and requirements for packaging. The standards also look at ripening conditions, storage and transportation of fruits and vegetables for all handlers. Ms. Zulu says fresh fruits and vegetables can pose a health risk to consumers if not properly handled. I would love to get uh, more details on the draft uh, Zambian standards on fruits and vegetables. Thank you so much. Um, I, I want to say that uh, yes, uh, the Zambia Bureau of Standards has uh, worked with other stakeholders, um, namely Ministry of Agriculture, uh, York Farm, um, and a number of other stakeholders to come up with uh, a draft standard on fruits and vegetables. You know that um, fruits and vegetables are widely consumed by our consumers and it's imperative that we ensure that uh, the quality of these uh, 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 foods that people are taking in uh, meets the set standard. And it's for that reason that you, we thought uh, we should come up with a standard that should guide you know, uh, food handlers on how best they can uh, produce these products for sale. So when you look at um, the standard itself, it uh, uh, defines specifications such as uh, the modes of transportation, modes of storage, uh, conditions of ripening uh, for, for, for the fruits. So we are calling upon uh, you know, the public, members of the public and other interested stakeholders to visit our offices uh, so that they can uh, access these uh, draft documents. The engineering institution Zambia, EIZ, says it has instituted investigations into the accident which occurred at Chat Breweries in Wansha, which resulted in the death of one person and eight others injured. The accident happened on Wednesday last week after a pressure cooker exploded, injuring nine workers, out of which one died later at the hospital. EIZ Communications Officer Cynthia Gwengwe says a team from the EIZ has been dispatched to investigate the accident and will issue a comprehensive report after investigations. Ms. Ngwengwe has assured the stakeholders that a report will be issued to the public once investigations are concluded. She said this in a statement to TV2 News in Lusaka today. Ms. Ngwengwe further said appropriate action will be taken against the organization once investigations are concluded. We take our second break. When we come back, international and sports news.